Hello everyone and welcome back to the Real Event channel. Hope you're all doing well. We're back on Train Simulator this evening with Sam from Blast Park Productions. Hello Sam. Hello. Uh, if anybody's in, could you just check that you can all hear Sam because uh, it'd make it for a bit of a weird stream if you can't hear him. Oh, that'd be quite amusing though, wouldn't it? It would. Let's uh, turn volume upon the stream and see if we get an echo. Yep, I do. Yep, we've got the OK, so uh, if we can bring in. The Ghibli. Right, so first, we've got a few of the quick drives that uh, Matt's put together. Lovely Ghibli. So we've got the uh, the coal tank and the Bahamas with uh, a couple of subs and some Mark 1s. And then down here, we've got the coal tank on four subs we have. So these are going to be coming with the pack. And then because Train Sim can't handle 8K textures in uh, all of uh, in one space, we'll have to go down to Keithley for the next bit. If I can uh, reach down there, that is. <laughs> oh, that's that's going to be the next issue, isn't it? You have to like zoom in and try and aim. If you oh. can click on the lurker. Oh. Oh, this is a good start, isn't it? <laughs> I actually can't, but I know what to do. We'll just back down a little bit. I thought I'd fix this, but uh, clearly not. <laughs> good evening, Matt. How are you? And a good evening, Sugar Rush. Hope you're both doing well. And I know I put a driver uh, engine down there, so I can click down there. <laughs> the only reason we clicked the the mat, uh, the engine mat is because the these two were actually rolling down the hill. So yeah, let's see if that's far enough, that'll do. Right, let's see if that'll work. Ah, illegal shunting methods. Pardon? Illegal shunting methods. Yeah, it'd be fine. We have permission. Yeah, it's fine as long as the guard's waving you on and you've not got any passengers on. Exactly. It, it was ECS anyway, there we are. <laughs> that worked. Right, another one of Matt's quick drives is the how many subs? Uh, how many Mark ones is that? Six, I believe. This one is. Oh no, four Mark ones and two subs. These are these are just a selection of them for now because I couldn't fit them all in. Nor would TS survive with them all in. <laughs> and the last example we've got for today is the. Uh, rail tour stock from the first rail tour. So oh, right. it's support coach. We've got the uh, reskinned Mark ones, complete with nameplates. Lovely Jopla. And um, at the back we have, I believe, the exact thirty-seven that was used. Thirty-seven six six nine. So, that is a very quick look at the quick drives. We're now going to load up the scenario to actually do a bit of driving. Lovely Jebla. Right. No you... pun intended. Oh, that's very, that was very smart, yeah. <laughs> so if anyone in chat's got any questions, then fire away and Sam will answer them to the best of his ability. Yeah, best of my ability being the uh, crucial point there. <laughs> uh, I just put your quick drive down, Matt. That's how I got 669. I'm guessing you set it, did you not? Or was that just um, pot luck?
I put them down twice and got 669 both times, so I'd assumed you'd put it down right. Oh, I, I've got to go and put some lottery numbers down if I've got pot up twice. <laughs> put some down for me while you're at it. <laughs> We'll split. We'll split the winnings. Yeah, that works for me. Right. So, if um, if you've been trying with potluck and you've not managed to get it, you can click on the Loco in Scenario Editor, um, and you can manually change manually change a number on it. Yeah, that that's what I was gonna do if that didn't work, but I got I got the right number both times, so I just left it. So, right, we've now loaded up that scenario. We've got Coal Tank Bahamas its support coach down there and a freight set down there as well. So I think what we'll do first is take uh, Bahamas up solo, well, because uh, why not? Blah, Right, let's let some passengers on. I just realised why you've joined. You can see if I can drive it properly, can't you? Uh, may or may not be why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, within a quick drive, I'm not sure, but definitely in the scenario editor you can. But I didn't, I didn't touch the uh, the engines on that one. Yeah, if you're in a quick drive, um, yeah, Matt's right. Your stream is quite laggy. Is it? It seems it seems all right at the moment, but you just had a bit of a laggy bit when you tried clicking on the harness. No, I didn't see anything. Uh, Streamlabs doesn't say anything, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, what you can do if you're in a quick drive, you should be able to go into World Editor and then Scenario Editor, and then you should be able to edit all the stock you've put down in the quick drive. Yeah. Uh. Right. So let's get the let's get the uh, the lamps on. So these come with 8K, te 8K textures, if I'm uh, correct? Yeah, um, quite a few of them as well. Which is something that I have admittedly been ridiculed about, but I did do it for very good reason. Um, basically, these engines are incredibly clean in real life. Um, and I wanted to try and represent that as best as I could in game. Yep. However, um, I didn't want to just use a block texture for it, because if I did that, then it doesn't really look too good in tracing. So what I did was I used some textures which have um, very fine brushstroke patterns on them, so it looks oh. like it's been painted on, and it's something you can't really tell unless you get proper up close and zoom into it. Oh yeah, you can, you can see the brushstroke, yeah. And you get really close. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's the reason why they've got such high quality textures. And there's also some high quality ones in the cab, um, which is so like you can see in the mainline warning notices. Yep. Now obviously you've, you've redone the, uh, the cab roof as well. That's, uh, not, not, that wasn't uh, standard yellow, was it? No. Um, I think it was a red colour on the original Loco. I basically changed almost every texture on almost every texture sheet for this reskin. A lot of work, um, I'm sure. Yeah, there's almost none of the original um, textures still on there. So it's been pretty much totally reworked. Uh, can you hear Sam now? Is that any better? Try turning you up a bit. Ready to hear? I'm, I'm rolling back. That must mean I'm ready to go. <laughs> Let's just make sure uh, Matt's happy and then we'll go. So, you've also got the uh, 
the option of having this BLS headboard and without, and that comes for the quick drives as well. We've put, we've put that option in. Yep, um, that BLS headboard actually comes with Lee Keefley and Worth Valley Railway pack, so you need that like, pack in order for that bit ah. to work. Has that been reskinned as well? That looks clear as well. Um, no, it's the um, original texture from the uh, Keefley and Worth Valley Railway pack. I'll try and stay away from the local as much as I can, Matt, if that's, a, that's an issue. Yeah, right. so that, uh, that headboard was made for the first version of the harness I did for Train Simulator, which was on the old oh, RSC Jubilee. Yeah, the, the discontinued one that you can only get from Amazon now. Yep. Right, let's go, see how far I can get. I don't remember a 12 or 5 off Keyfleet, it must be a 12 o'clock running late. Yeah, possibly. It's me, anyway. <laughs> right. Come on, let's go. Big up Amazon indeed. We'll, have we'll, you um? We will be have, going you at some point. have you taken the brakes off, Michael? I have taken the brakes off. Yeah. Are you sure? Because the brake fin looks like it's flickering to me. Mm. We were rolling back at one point. Oh, we're now going forward. There we go. <laughs> I promise I'm a competent driver. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, what do you mean, Ben, by what king? I'm assuming the signal, uh, the points are set right. There we go. Speeding. Not anymore. <laughs> Come on, Michael, it's supposed to be a challenge getting out of Keefley. You can't just put the egg in the roof and thrash it up there. <laughs> Are you sure? It's just so powerful. Yeah, I did do a little bit of tweaking to it, um, just to try and reflect the improved performance and steaming capabilities you get from the double chimney compared yep. to the standard Jubilee. Yeah. So, what I did was... Um, I changed the values in the simulation file um, to improve the steaming capability by approximately a third, which is what British Railways found the improvement in steaming capacity was when they conducted the experiment on Bahamas with a double chimney. Uh -huh. Definitely, uh, uh, you've definitely gone into detail with this. Yeah, I've put a fair bit into it. Um, but like I said, I volunteer with the society. Um, and I've seen the amount of care and attention that they put into the engines and I wanted to try and reflect that as best I could with the models in game. Uh -huh. your, uh, your new addition of the, uh, the new steam texture is a, a nice addition as well. Do you prefer that or the original one? Uh, I, I kind of prefer this one at the minute. I haven't really played with it too much yet, obviously, because you only sent it over yesterday. Yeah, I prefer this one because it's a bit thicker, but the only issue is, for some reason I haven't yet worked out, it's quite glitchy. So if you sort of, if you look at it as it's going up, the test just sort of clip with each other a bit. Yeah. Um, it might just be a transparency thing, it might be something I can fix. Uh, but I'll have to have a look at that. Ah, Fox Red Buddy says this one looks better. Yeah. There you are, your first piece of feedback. That'll do. Ben Engel um, asks what type of train is accompanied by music? Gravy train. <laughs> or maybe a groovy train. A groovy train. 
Um, Matt asks, is it free? Um, that's a very good question, Matt, and to be perfectly honest, I don't have an answer to that at the moment. Um, yeah, that depends on a few things which um, I've yet to get organised with Lapat. If they fall into place, it will probably end up being payware. If they don't come through, um, then it'll probably be freeware, but I can't say for certain yet. And Michael's dumping the brakes. <laughs> no, we're just coming into a nice gentle stop. Nice gentle stop. Passengers in the Jubilee bar, we've just lost all the fancy drinks. The issue is though, I can't see anybody in it. <laughs> it's empty. Right. So Ben Ingle asks, what's your favourite loco that's named after a place? Um, well that's my favourite loco of all time, which is Nunlo, um, which is also a Bahamas Locomotive Society engine, but that's the first steam engine that I ever worked on while it was in steam. So it's the first one I fired, first one I drove, um, so it's it's got a special place in my heart, um, and that engine's named after Nunlo Hill, which actually no longer exists because it was quarried away for cement. Uh, Sugar Rush, if you can jump on before we leave, then sure. But we are going to see you after you head up. You have to shout at the people in the ticket office and get a cold <laughs> train. <laughs> Ah, Ben says it was a bridal train for the one that uh, accompanies music. Uh, uh, we'll look into the feed if it keeps freezing up. Hopefully it'll improve at some point. Because once again, Streamlabs is not showing any issues up at the minute. Yeah, it's possible that it might be putting more of the... Um I mean, More of the bandwidth jump. into Discord than it needs to. Possibly. I don't think I've changed anything since that uh, race we did. Yeah, right. Although, to be fair, it could even be train sim itself. I was going to say, it's either train sim or the fact that Discord's updated itself and I don't know what's changed. <laughs> So yeah, it is still a work in progress, there's still a few textures that need changing, believe it or not. Um, yeah, like I said, the last update the one I sent out last night, Michael, if you have a look at the... Um, on the back head of the boiler, if you have a look at the bits where it's not covered by cladding, where you've got the bolts... Yeah. Well, where um, oh, you should be able to see that they look a bit rusty now. On the outside or the inside? On the inside. On the inside, okay. Let's have a look. I, ch I checked your uh, buffers, they're, they're definitely cleaner. Yep. Oh, down there. A little bit. Yep, so you can just see on that one above the, um, the, one above the fire road door as well. Yep, just a, little, just a tiny bit of uh, rust, just, just adds to that uh, realism. Yeah, not massively rusted, but just trying to reflect the fact that, yeah, that's a bit of the loco which isn't covered in nice shiny polished paint. <laughs> well, we've made it to the Mems and with no issues. Well, we've apart from your driving. I was going to say, we've got no passengers for the Mems, so we're going straight through. Uh, no, confirmed release date yet, Matt. Uh, I'm sure Sam's going to make sure it's perfect before it's uh, released. Yeah, um, the release date is really conditional on how long it takes me to get it ha get happy with it. Um, my intention is to hopefully release it at some point this year. Um, but I may try and match it up with a special occasion to do with BLS as a bit of a promo thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, for which I can think of two upcoming big events at the moment 
one of which is the Bahamas going down south to uh, do the Cornish Riviera Express, double-headed with Mayflower. That's something to look forward to, is it? Definitely on the interest list there. And the other event would be the return of 1054, seeing as that features heavily in this pack as well. It does. Um, so what I've done with uh, 1054, I've represented that in all of its preservation era liveries. So you've got it in London Northwestern Unlined, London Northwestern Lined in both mainline and preserved line condition. Um, you've got it in LMS livery and you've got it in British Railways livery. Yeah, so it's not just a just a single reskin, is it? It's def definitely a pack. Yep. Um, and I'm considering having a go at putting Bahamas into LMS pink, as it was. Oh, no, that that would definitely um, be interesting. Called so because it was supposed to be Crimson Lake, but at the time they did, couldn't really afford the proper paint, um, and so you ended up with. A sort of uh, rather pale red colour. That's something we've not seen in uh, Train Sim before, though, is it? So, um, not with Bahamas, I think. Um, yeah, Matt's saying you need water, and he's right. I know, I know. I was too busy talking. It's yeah, okay. I think we're you want to... We're stopping at uh, Oakworth anyway, that'll give it enough time. Yeah, that, that's... you kind of a stick both injectors on that level, Matt. Uh, micro, rather. There we are, that'll, that'll do. 17% is fine. Mm. Mm. <laughs> well, see, we're if at 20 it, now, it's going up nicely. Yeah, if it got to 17% in the boiler, I'd be starting to panic a bit. Well, yeah, but uh, it's train sim. <laughs> so if you're wondering, for the quick drives, you will need a, a, the Armstrong Powerhouse Class Mark 1s. Uh, as well as some other bits that are still to be confirmed. Nice clean buffers as well, in uh, the latest edition. Yep. Uh, that's something I've tweaked. If you have a look, you can just see the pale mark of where the big white blob was on yeah, the previous one. Just, just around the middle. I can see it on the, um, the left hand side, I can't really see it on the right hand side. Yeah, you should be, if you look closely, you should be able to notice some little ringlets on it as well. Oh, um, yeah. Part of some machining marks on it. Yeah. And the obligatory nice and clean uh, coupling as well. Yeah. I am now just waiting for water, so... Yeah, the reskin you see in here is the reskin of Bahamas in its uh, current preserved condition at the minute. Obviously, all work in progress at the minute. Yep. Shouldn't be too long, and I might be able to go. Let's let the passengers off and on again. What well, if you got 54% in the boiler? 58 now. Yeah, you can make it with that. Just leave the injector on as you go. I've um, when I've been tweaking the simulation, I've done it to suit a uh, to suit mainline running. Yeah. So, yeah, y you should be able to get to 25 mile an hour and still generate steam and be able to inject on the preserve line, unless you really like your fire drop. Anything's possible. <laughs>
Yep, Orkworth where the uh, Railway Children was filmed. If you've got any questions, then uh, ask away, Sam will do his best to answer them. Yep. We've established that it's not ready for release yet, and it's not, it doesn't know yet whether it's going to be payway or freeway. So, in other words, we've established not much. Well, we've ruled out it's going to be released at the end of the stream. Sam, do you miss Michael? Oh, that's a good <laughs> question. Oh, see, Michael is my um, Michael is my line side buddy for photography. Indeed. So, yeah, it's it's lonely without Michael when you're line side. I mean, can you even line side at the minute? That's the that's the issue. Well, I mean, technically speaking, yes, but there's not really any point because there's nothing to photograph. Tell your train sim does not like the Howarth area. I think it's just your computer, Michael. I think you need to get a you know more expensive one and spend more of your money on it. Well, it runs 50 FPS everywhere except Howarth. <laughs> I don't, I don't even look at the FPS on mine anymore. I've spent that long playing it with FPS in the teams. It's just anything above like now is just lightning fast. I mean, to be fair, you keep a constant 20, you can't see anything. Yeah. Right, so there's Haworth. Are you yeah, also... man, there, is, uh, there is Vulcan on work strands. I've put down uh, some additional vocals, because why not? In case you wanted to uh, pair them with anything. Oh, what have we got up there? We've got the standard 2, the standard 4, and uh, the black 5. Well, a standard fall is another one of my reskins. That one's an enjoyable one to drive. But yeah, if you want to uh, double head with any of them, then why not? We can even shove the harmers on some for it, why not? Matt's requested a run with Black Five and Bahamas. Ooh, it's a bit overkill, isn't it? <laughs> Depends how many carriages and wagons you put in on it. All of them. <laughs> we'll do that at the end of the stream because then you can get to Oxenhope and uh, not have to worry about running around. Yeah, that's a good plan. So Sugar Rush says Bahamas is the best. I mean, there's the... Uh... Oof, oof. Well, Bahamas is no none low, but... I think we can safely say Bahamas is the best ever mess engine. I think we can say that. I think we can say Bahamas is... It depends what you're saying the best at, really. I mean... If you're talking in performance, then... Well... Best Jubilee in terms of performance, um, but you know it's still not much compared to a you know Duchess or Princess or. Well, it looks nice. That's enough. Well, well yeah, I it think look, it, it looks uh, nice. It makes a good noise. Well, personally, in my personal controversial opinion, co well. Controversial to all those southerners, anyway. Um, <clears throat> uh, but yeah, in my opinion, Bahamas is the best turned out mainline engine in the country. And I'm sure 
most people that see it would agree. Um, however, um, whenever I mention that, you always get people going, Ooh, what about plan line? <laughs> so, uh, I've got to give the mention there, but I believe the Bash Mash did a poll on that last year, year before. Yeah, I think they did. Um, and they did a tournament for best presented mainline engine, and um, in that tournament, Bahamas got second place behind Clan Line, so That's even if it's way. not quite the best, it's still up there. Let's have a quick look at uh, the chat. Matt says it's never too much. Uh, Moylesy98 says it'd be good to see Bahamas back on rail tours. And well, that's kind of a curved fin at the moment, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think uh, everything's on hold in that regard. And Sugar Rush has been on the footplate. I must have been at a gala. Uh, not necessarily. We've oh, done a the, few. Uh, uh, we have done a few footplate things without um, Bahamas being at a gala. I mean, the three skins as clean as Bahamas, so that's the. Uh, <laughs> Just in time for that uh, point change, or we'd been going down the carriage garden. <laughs> Yeah, it does catch you out, that, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, it, ju it just seems to be on the free roams, automatically set. Yeah, I've had a few times where I've, um, I've ended up in the back of the cabbage shed <laughs> when I was supposed to be going into the station and it's been sort of a, ooh, that's an awkward situation that's got to be put in the rule book. That's going to be a lot of paperwork <laughs> to fill out. Yeah, depends who you're do doing the event for. I mean, if it's the, uh, the branch line society, they'd be happy. Well, that's true. Now you see, if I get this one car uh, one wheel turn out, Matt's going to complain I've put the train in the wrong place. <laughs> yes, I think the track work's not quite right here. It's not far off, but the loco seems to stop quite far down the platform. Also, wow. Oh, yeah, You've I stopped know. short a bit there. I know, I know. Better to stop short than uh, not at all. Mm, mm. There we are. That's good enough. Amateur drivers. There's a reason I play trains and not actually drive the thing. <laughs> well, to be fair, I've never driven the thing, but I can manage it in train sim. But if you do want to watch me drive it, then uh, feel free to hop along on the Angry Marshman production stream tomorrow when we're taking Bahamas on the main line on the North Wales coast from Crew to Holyhead. That's, that should be fun. With the uh, well, re firing at least. Yeah, it should be interesting. When we've done them previously, I've normally fired and he's driven. Uh -huh. uh, it'll be interesting to see um, what happens this way around. Although the route is fairly flat, so it's just regging the roof and... Off we go. <laughs> yeah, Matt's right there. Um, you want to try and stop with the um, the front of the first coach behind the engine. Yeah. Just before the bit where the points change colour. Uh -huh. And technically speaking, the points don't actually change colour either. It's just where it goes from 3D sleepers to 2D sleepers. There's a special program to have two people driving and firing, I believe. 
the, the name escapes yeah. me, but I think. Um, we use, um, I think it's Parsec we use. Um, but it's, um, it's basically a screen sharing program. Um, and because it's a screen sharing program, uh, what we can do is we can, it's essentially like me having my keyboard and mouse plugged into Visa's computer. Yeah. Um, so it means that it's essentially like having two inputs. So Reese can do what he's doing with his bit and I can do what I'm doing with that bit, but it's still only one game instance. I've never used it, to, uh, to be honest, but it looks fun. It's it's something different, and I think it's the closest we'll ever get to a proper multiplayer in Train Sim. Um, but, yeah. It'd be nice one day if we could see a, um, you know, a proper, properly made Train Simulator with multiplayer functionality. It would be nice. I'm not sure if we're going to yeah. get it, but it'd be nice. Well, we can hurt. But, you know, even if it was something like what we've got here, but you could have, you know, like what we do with Parsec, but you could have um, have two cameras, so each one of you could look around. Yeah. But you still have control of the same engine. But it's particularly good for steam engines, especially advanced ones, which require a lot of focus to drive. Yeah. Because by having two of you doing it, it makes it a much more realistic experience. But it allows you to focus on the little things that you normally wouldn't get a chance to. So if you're driving, you can actually look at the line side signals and the line side speed limits rather than relying on looking at the hood and looking at your fire and your water all the time. And if you're all a fireman, similarly, you can just look at your fire and water and you don't need to worry about where you're going or your speed. No. A bit more realistic. Yeah. And it's a bit more challenging as well. It's, it's kind of interesting in that respect because you don't have as much to focus on, but it's somehow more difficult. <laughs> I guess it's because uh, if it goes wrong, then it's one of your one of your fault. Yeah. Can't blame yourself. Well, <laughs> yeah. We had um, we've had some interesting experiences with that. We did um, we did a run with another Bossman Games logo. I can't remember which one it was. It was one of the bullies um, going over the South Devon banks, and I think I were firing at the time, and Reese were driving. Um, but yeah, we managed to stall it anyway, um, and we just drained the thinner pressure, but in the end we managed to make it over the hill. Uh, but it was it was quite satisfying to see that sort of teamwork and see it paying off. Yeah. Um, yeah, Miles is saying Bahama server shot would be a good one to see. But oh likely God. only happening in train sim. Well, never say never. Um, you know, if there's the opportunity to take it over Shap, I'm sure BLS would go for it if it was, you know, suitable for them. Um, if we can take it all the way down to, yeah, on Great Western Mainline, all the way down to Penzance, then I'm sure we could take it over Shap. The world is your oyster, as they say. Well, I had my slow commotives when they were based in, before I moved to Ingra, I had a saying. And the saying was that Dintin men go everywhere. Um, and I believe some of our volunteers from BLS have made it as far afield as Australia. We've had some that have gone and volunteered with, um, I think they went and volunteered with Steam Rail in Victoria. Alright. Um, which is, that's the... Victorian state uh, mainline steam operator. Um, 
And if you ever go to BLS, you'll notice that we actually have the number plate from uh, Victorian Railway's R-Class steam locomotive um, on our wall there, which is just a little reminder of that, yep. to, uh, that relationship we've got there. Right, if you are just joining us, then um, we're on the Worth Valley route with the uh, Work in Progress reskin on Bahamas. We've got Sam with us who developed it, so if you've got any questions, then pop them in the chat and I'll... Uh, He'll do his best to answer them. Right, shall we da try going downhill this time? Yeah, we're going for all lamps, all or nothing. Well, Bahamas has pulled a rail train before. Although not technically a four lamp curved rail train because oh. people get really picky about that. <laughs> um. But yes, we did have a visit from, uh, oh gosh, got to wrap my brain here. It was one of the Dukes of something or other. I honestly can't remember off the top of my head. I'd have to um, have to look it up again. But yes, we had a royal visit with Bahamas and uh, he had a trip on the footplate. Did he comment um, how uh, clean it was? Cap. Do you know, I'm not entirely sure, but... I know, like, we had put a lot of polish on the engine that day. That, that doesn't surprise it, me somehow. Well, it was kept up at Howarth, um, because it's too big for the shed at Ingra. So, we'd spent ages cleaning and polishing it, but I remember, that like, when we left the shed, um, there was uh, quite a lot of moisture that like, came out of the chimney. <laughs> and it brought quite a lot of the fire out with that moisture, so it was just like someone had flicked a load of black paint all over the top of the engine. Oh dear. And this was within about 10 metres of moving off shed. So by the time we got it down to Ingra, there were a whole team of us clambering all over it to get it clean again. <laughs> so here's one for you. Football King asks, how do you export fi uh, KWVR files from Train Simulator? Um, that's a good question. What exactly do you mean by that, Football King? Um, I put all of these lamps on the tender, they don't seem now to be being taken off, so that's a good job, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's something else to point out while you're looking at the tender. If you have a look at the tender plates, um, the tender plates have actually been textured and I've changed the text that is on them so that it matches what is actually on Bahamas. Alright. Um, so the top one is exactly the same, however the bottom plate is the wrong shape because Bahamas is, is rectangular rather than oval. Alright. Um, but I've still changed the text so that it reads the same. Yeah. Ooh, Matt Lowcock asks another good question. How long has this pack taken to get this far? Um, <laughs> that's a really good question because I've just before joining the stream, I actually noticed that I had a Facebook memories thing, and that was a reskin I did of Bahamas for Microsoft Train Simulator five years ago. Um. So there was that iteration of Bahamas, I landed the RSC one that came with the Worth Valley route um, and this particular reskin of the Bossman Games Jubilee I have been working on for well over two years now. Um, I think it was about September 2018 when I started it. Yeah, I seem to remember you, you released a version so, of some sort when uh, Bahamas returned to Steam, didn't you? Yeah, um, that was sort of the initial version of the reskin, and so ever since then I've been slowly tweaking it and improving bits on it. Um, so yeah, it's been a long time. Um, but in terms of hours, <laughs> um, I reckon it's coming up on well over 200 hours I've spent on it altogether. Um, out of which a hundred or so of those hours have been this year. 
Um, so far I've worked on it every weekend this year. Uh, just doing little bits and bats on it. Kind of becomes a job, doesn't it? With all the uh, referencing and then applying the reskin. Yeah, but it's, it's it's a hobby, yeah, but it's it takes a lot of time and work like goes into it and I'm a bit of a perfectionist with it, you know, it's I want it to be as close as it can be to the real thing. Yeah. So let's uh Matt yeah. says is the S on LMS meant to be smaller? Um yeah, it's <laughs> It is, in fact, actually the same size. Ah, um, no, it's not. just the fact that the L and the M are a lot fatter than the S. Ah. Um, if you have a look at the left-hand side of the M, oh, you'll see that it's quite thin. Oh, uh, yeah, and then it goes fatter. And then it goes fatter. So it's just that the S is quite thin at the top and the bottom, so it doesn't stand out as much. Um, that and the image that I used to uh, trace the lettering on is at a slight angle, so it does look a little bit smaller, but... It, it, I, you only notice it when you're really up close. They look the yeah. same from a distance. And let's be honest, most people will be driving Bahamas going chimney first anyway. Oh yeah, we're, we're going express down to Keithley so we can uh, have a look at the, uh, the coal tank as well. Lovely to play. Um, um, Oh, Harry, Harry asks, any news on your Duchess pack? Um, the Duchess pack is my next project to get all the work I can done on it as soon as the BLS pack is finished. Um, so, it's not near release yet, but um, all the work I have left to do on the Duchess pack until I get someone doing the 3D modelling for me um, is the capside numbers. So I've got some of them done. I think I've got the BR ones and the streamlined LMS ones to do. Um, but once I've done that, I'll be entirely dependent on my 3D modeler to create all the nameplates and smokebox number plates for me. Um, but yeah, that's going to be my next main focus once this one's done. Something to keep your trouble in. Eh? Yep. So, Football King, as Matt said later on in the chat, if you you should be able to download it and run the installer if you're trying to uh, trying to install the the root. Could be as easy as that. Yeah. Ah, Football King has been on Bahamas at the West Valley and on its rail tour. Ah, lovely. Now, if you went on the um, on the rail tour last year, um, the 2020 one, uh, I believe that was um, the one that it did without a diesel on the back, if I remember correctly. I think so. Um, I think it did the... The first two it did in 2019, it did two weekends in a row. Uh, both of those we had a diesel on the back, and I think later on in the year it did a Waverley, um, which it did from York, which I think it didn't have a diesel on the back for, and then I seem to think it didn't have a diesel, um, didn't have a diesel last year. Now, while thinking about it, I also seem to recall we did a weird manoeuvre where we had to go to um, Shipley or something. Like that. Yeah, to uh, get back onto the Worth Valley, yeah. Right. Um, which may have had a diesel on for it, so I can't quite remember with that. The first one definitely did. I the first, tell you that the one. two tours def definitely did. The February 2019 ones did. But I know like, it has done one unassisted as well, which might have been the Waverla, but I can't quite remember. But 
yeah, I think it was uh, it was an interesting manoeuvre, like little run to Shipley and back, because that's that's um, a rare bit of mainline running for uh, that line. It is, yeah. We don't normally see them go up that bit. No, uh, it's uh, it's common for if you get Waverley's going from York, but that doesn't happen too often. I mean, I've completely uh, lost all the water, so we'll get rid of some, we'll uh, put some more of that in. <sighs> it's fine, we're running downhill. You know you could have stuck Liotta a fireman on, don't you? It is on. So you, you know you can stick him on the injectors as well, don't you? Can you? I, I don't think in the injectors uh, work because it could Right, let, um... me, let me teach you something new, Michael. Can you see the little light bulb button? Yeah, the one they used, no, normally use to put the lights on. Click that. And click it about four times, I think. Four. You'll get a little message pop up. There we are, four. Injector controls. Ah. Oh. Uh, yeah, it I thought the be. boss man stuff couldn't do the injectors because it didn't know when to... Uh, it, it couldn't control when you stopped. I thought the reasoning was. Yeah, it can run the injectors. It's not brilliant. Um, it is better doing it manually if you can, but if you're doing anything where you might lose attention... <laughs> Um, then it's quite good just to stick that on so that like, you know you know you can't run out then because it will stick the injectors on if you start running out yeah um, I think it worked I think it only you have to drop to a certain level before it will stick them on though so if you if you've been doing it manually and you keep it at a good level it won't kick in but if you're a bit negligent and it drops um, then it will stick land back on for you. Right, let's uh, come to a stop.